Hello, and welcome to Popcorn News. Something to watch while you eat popcorn. U.S. government mind control experiments on children. Uh, with an I introduction by John Rappaport. In s sometime in the 1990s, uh, an advisory committee on human radiation experiments was convened. And the committee's charter included a review of experiments conducted since the 1940s with ionizing radiation in the investigation of specific intentional releases of radiation into the environment. But this committee uh, began to expand in its scope. Uh, the president directed federal agencies to search their files for information about research on human subjects in the past. This process has been revised and expanded under the committee's direction. Literally thousands of documents, many previously unreported, and some of them only declassified this year, circa 1995, have been made available to the public as a result of this effort. The committee, Advisory Committee on Human Radiation Experiments in Washington, D.C., uh, at first was just looking at the radiation experiments, but uh, things began to expand in their scope. And uh, only a fragment of the testimony uh, on the other aspects was submitted uh, it orally at the actual hearings because there was so much the testimony, a lot of it was, was written and submitted. Well, that's just to show that uh, to people who are living in uh, Super Bowl land or Star Wars land, that there's been some bad things going on that they don't quite tell you about. And uh, here is uh, someone testifying in the 1990s to that uh, Committee on Radiation Experiments about her mind control experience. I'm Christy Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. My parents were divorced around 1966 and Donald Richard Ebner, my natural father, was involved with Dr. Green in the experiments. I was a subject from 1966 to 1976. Dr. Green performed radiation experiments on me in 1970, focusing on my neck, throat, and chest, 1972 focusing on my chest and my uterus in 1975. Each time I became dizzy, nauseous, and threw up. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green was using me mostly as a mind control subject from 1966 to 1973. His objective was to gain control of my mind and train me to be a spy assassin. Okay, so some this person was uh, subjected to mind control experiments and that is related in the context of Kyle Odom, who uh, had a strange experience. And uh, I discern that he may have been subjected to mind control experiments. So uh, there's a lot of possibilities. 
but at any rate, what happened to, one thing that happened to Kyle Odom that began all this is that he had a transcendental experience uh, where he was meditating and he seemed to travel outside of his body and he encountered a, a female being of unconditional love. But this became a threat to uh, the Martians, the supposed Martians who are controlling the Earth. Uh, I don't automatically dismiss it. Uh, there's a lot of alternate realities going on. Uh, and for example, Philip K. Dick, the science fiction author, he had uh, a similar transcendental experience which uh, changed his life and in 1977, he spoke about this uh, at a public seminar. It's okay. It's okay. The subject of this speech is a topic which has been discovered recently and which may not exist at all. I may be talking about something that does not exist. I, in exist. my stories and novels, often write about counterfeit worlds, semi-real worlds, as well as deranged private worlds, inhabited often by just one person, while meantime the other characters either remain in their own worlds throughout or are somehow drawn into one of the peculiar ones. What I was sensing was the manifold of partially actualized realities lying tangent to what evidently is the most actualized one, the one which the majority of us by consensus gentium agree on. Later that day, back home again but still deeply under the influence of the sodium pentothal, I had a short acute flash of recovered memory. Then in mid-March, month later, the total body of memories intact and entire began to return. It's a common theme in my writing that a dark-haired girl shows up at the door of the protagonist and tells him that his world is delusional, that there's something false about it, well, this did finally happen to me. I even knew that her hair would be black. I had an actual complete sense of what she would look like and what she would say. She did appear, she was a total stranger, and she did inform me, I'm going to be very candid with you. I wrote both novels based on fragmentary residual memories of such a horrid slave state world. People claim to remember past lives. I claim to remember a different, very different present life. I know of no one who has ever made this claim before, but I rather suspect that my experience is not unique. What perhaps is unique is the fact that I am willing to I talk submit about that it. these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, <coughs> such an impression is a clue that at some past time point, a variable was changed reprogrammed as it were and that because of this an alternative world branched off so what did Kyle Odom exactly write in his manifesto which out of desperation to get some kind of help he uh, sent to various newspapers and media outlets and uh, eventually traveled to the White House and, and put it on a thumb drive, uh, his uh, what I call his Kyle Odom manifesto, and, and tossed it over the White House fence, hoping that the president would read it. Um, but uh, what exactly is in this manifesto? Here, here is uh, a thumbnail sketch of what's in it. The Kyle Odom manifesto, unredacted version. Who is Kyle Odom? Uh, we know that from past uh, Popcorn News reports. His life was ruined, ruined by an intelligent species of amphibian humanoid from Mars. I wish I was joking.
They were here long before we ever existed. Their technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. I've seen them do things that defy all comprehension. They have a massive breeding stock of humans. Okay, this is where it begins, really. Uh, he encountered a being through meditation in February 2014. Uh, meditating... I felt very peaceful there until a blue light began to approach me. As the blue light got closer, I realized it was another being. Once I was in the being's presence, I felt an immediate sense of wrongdoing. It felt like I was being told, you shouldn't be here. I instantly conceded and felt guilty. Then I began to distance myself from the being. This had an impact on them and seemed to change their mind about me. The moment I began to distance myself from the being, I became overwhelmed by a feeling I can only describe as unconditional love. During this part of the experience, our minds became connected and I saw that the being was female. I then began to feel the most euphoric, comforting, and blissful feelings I have ever felt. It was incredibly powerful and life-altering. Okay, here's where Tim Remington comes in. Uh, he's the pastor in Idaho that got shot. Uh, I started receiving text messages from Tim Remington. At first, they were innocuous Bible messages. But then he started threatening me. He sent messages talking about their power and other things. He did all of this through Bible verses so it would not look suspicious. I ignored everything until he sent one final text message, which simply said, Angels. I thought nothing of it until helicopters started flying around my house all day and all night. At this point I knew I was in trouble. I knew I needed to contact them, so I made an appointment to meet John Padula for coffee. Little did I know he had no intention of meeting me. He tried to go to sleep that night. As soon as I got into bed, the song started again. Sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. As it turned out, they weren't kidding. I got literally zero minutes of sleep that night. Uh, that song uh, is a song by Talking Heads, uh, Stay Up Late. Okay, here's what the secret Martians, how they behave. After getting off the plane, I headed to the baggage claim. A huge group of them surrounded me there. I watched them cautiously. Then they all began sniffing at me. The sniff is something they do all the time. I think it has something to do with dominance. When I finally got my bag, I left the airport as fast as I could. Okay, and then the Martians started stimulating his penis and anus simultaneously. Then they spoke aggressively. They said, humans are nothing more than the result of a successful genetic experiment. You are a threat to the way these people think, and you can no longer be free in society. Your life is over. You are nothing but a toy. Your purpose now is to uh, redact it. At this point, he becomes enraged. It takes every ounce of Kyle Odom's willpower not to kill them. Besides, he's going to check into the VA. That's the Veterans Affairs Hospital. He's an ex-Marine, so uh, he, he goes there for help. They 
shipped me straight to the mental ward and I was admitted. Nothing improved while I was there. The medication they gave me did absolutely nothing. Uh, and that's key because here he is uh, put on medication uh, before he shoots the pastor. All right, the president, President Obama, is well aware of the Martians, which is why Kyle Odom wrote him a personal letter. I hope he does something about it. I have done nothing wrong to deserve what's happened to me. I tried literally everything to find a job, and they sabotaged me at every corner. His last resort was to take actions to bring this to the public's attention. Habeas Corpus, deliver the body, the disappearing Kyle Odom. Kyle Odom, accused shooter of an Idaho pastor named Tim Remington. Uh, he traveled to Washington, D.C. and uh, threw apparently a thumb drive over the fence of the White House, got arrested. Uh, turns out there's a warrant in Idaho that he's wanted, but he is uh, resisting extradition to Idaho, and for now he's being held in Washington, D.C. Uh, a report, Odom appeared Wednesday, March 9th, in District of Columbia Superior Court wearing handcuffs and a chain connecting his ankles. He said only his name when asked. Public Defender I E S H A A H. And what kind of a name is that? But is I E S H A A H Murphy, that's the Public Defender, said Odom declined to waive an extradition hearing and he went back and be sent back to Idaho. So he's resisting extradition. He will be held in jail pending a hearing scheduled for April 6th in Washington where the only issue is whether the Idaho warrant for attempted first degree murder in his case is valid. Uh, so there he is, the disappearing Odom, uh, in jail in Washington DC uh, and no hearing till April 6th. Uh, habeas corpus deliver the body why can't uh, the press talk to this guy why can't we hear what he's got to say thank you for watching popcorn news